CleanWeb 2.0 is here and it's awesome. iOS 16 and macOS Ventura compatibility with Surfshark just got better. What are some of the best Surfshark deals you can get right now? Let's discuss. Surfshark Academy just hit 9,000 subscribers this past week, and as you may know, my wish this holiday season is to get to 10,000. So if you could hit subscribe and help me spread the word about Surfshark to more people, I would really appreciate it. What is up guys, welcome to another edition of Surfshark Academy. As per usual, I've gathered all the hot news that happened over the past month and put them all together in this video so that you can be up to date on everything. Now guys, the holidays are upon us and this is the best time for anyone who is looking to get a good deal for Surfshark. I know that there's still a few of you out there watching who maybe don't know why you should get a VPN. So if that's the case, let me quickly explain. A VPN will secure your connection by creating a tunnel to another virtual location. This will prevent your ISP from knowing what you do online and is especially useful if you use public Wi-Fi since that connection is not encrypted in any way. In just a few simple clicks, Surfshark will let you connect to its global network of VPN servers. Surfshark can also be used on a limited number of devices, which is unique among VPNs. Now, usually Surfshark Surfshark VPN costs $2.49 per month, but if you hit the first link in the description and use the code SHARKTUBE, it will drop that price all the way down to just $2.05, and it will also give you two extra months for free. So hey, you may not have Surfshark or maybe you plan to extend your current subscription, then this is a great time to do so. By the way, Surfshark is not just a VPN as it also offers other privacy and security tools with its Surfshark One bundle. My favorite of the bunch is Surfshark Alert, which will let you know if any of your sensitive information was leaked in an online data breach. Data breaches happen all the time and it may be too late to change your password or delete your information if you find out about it long after it happened. So Alert is great for letting you know when you need to take action ASAP. Another great tool that's included in this bundle is Search, as it allows you to get ad-free organic search results online. I use it as my default search platform as it gets rid of those annoying top results that have the ad badge on them. And finally, one also adds search Surfshark antivirus. It's far better than what comes natively with your operating system and it doesn't bog down your system when scans are being run in the background. So for instance, I can still enjoy gaming with good performance and stay secure at the same time. That's what I call a double win. Now, to get these three additional tools, you can add the Surfshark One bundle when using our special link, or if you already have a VPN, you can upgrade from within the account settings. All right, so that's your special winter deal for 2022. I highly recommend that you give it a shot, and hey, if you don't enjoy Surfshark, then no worries, as it offers a 30-day money-back guarantee. And now, let's talk about CleanWeb and the new Surfshark browser extension update. We've already made a video about that, which I will link in the description just below that like button. But to give you a quick summary, CleanWeb is not just an ad blocker anymore, as it now incorporates four features in total. First, of course, is the aforementioned ad blocker, which has been improved, and now it blocks even more ads on more websites. The cookie pop-up blocker is now also part of CleanWeb, and it gets rid of those annoying pop-up messages when visiting websites for the first time. Next, the data breach scanner will let you know if there was a data breach on the website that you're visiting. This is different from Surfshark Alert, as it only informs you about the data breach on the current website, but it's still good to know. And finally, malware where alert will let you know if the website that you're on right now ever hosted any malicious files for download. All these features are now wrapped up in a new dashboard interface showing you which feature is enabled or disabled. Being a which, you can visit the settings, clean web settings menu, and only enable the features that you want, which is a nice touch. Of course, not all websites will work when using an ad blocker, so the devs also added bypass for improvements allowing you to bypass certain websites to not use clean web. A very important thing to note, however, is that these improvements improvements for clean web are only present if you use the browser extension and you don't have to be connected to the VPN in order to use them. I bet those of you who don't run their VPNs connected 24 seven will appreciate that. All in all, just like I said in the previous video, I love this update, but let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Let's now talk about Surfshark macOS updates. If you're on MacBook, you may know that macOS Ventura was recently released. And personally, I've been enjoying the nice quality of changes that it brought. Surfshark macOS app has been updated to version 4.5.1 and with that, it now fully supports macOS Ventura. So make sure to update your app if you are having any kind of issues. Oh, and this update also brings the Google and Apple 
Apple login feature, which makes logging in an absolute breeze. Apple also updated its mobile platform. iOS 16 brought some neat changes that even makes me as an Android user a little jealous, like those lock screen widgets. And hey, with the Surfshark iOS app version 3.7, you can now add a Surfshark VPN widget to your lock screen. It will allow you to connect or disconnect right from your lock screen. This update also had a lot of stability and performance improvements under the hood, which is great to know. The Surfshark research team has also released a new study this month. It turns out that an average rural US citizen overpays for the internet compared to most people living in urban states. So good news if you live in states like New Jersey, Massachusetts, or New York, as you're getting a really good value for your internet compared to the overall US average. That being said, in states like West Virginia, Montana, and Arkansas, the internet is generally less affordable, which is quite baffling to be honest, and it further creates an internet divide and that's not great. Anyway, if you want to read more about this topic, I'll leave a link to the full study in the description below. Now, let me ask you, is incognito mode, that browser feature that has the mysterious character with the hat and glasses, really private? Well, if you're curious about that, then you should check out this video on our second channel from my colleague, Victoria. She goes over all the little details and reasons as to, spoiler alert, why you should not think of incognito mode as some kind of one-click solution to being private on the web. So again, go watch that video, subscribe to that channel, and let them know that I sent you. Finally, it's time for the community poll of the week. In case you missed it, we do various community polls related to Surfshark, CyberSec, and Tech Daily on our channel, so make sure to cast your votes when a new poll is released. This time, it's all about the little bubbles that you see next to every country in the Surfshark VPN locations list. I wanted to ask if you find these bubbles useful. According to the poll results, 29% of you do not understand what these bubbles mean exactly. These bubbles indicate server load. So if a server has a bubble that is filled up, you may want to avoid that location and use the one that is less crowded. Otherwise, you will have bubble trouble. Does anyone remember that game from Miniclip? No? Just me? You also commented how maybe there should be some kind of rework done to them just to make them more obvious and easier to understand. But hey, if you have any further thoughts about the server load bubbles, the clean web 2.0 update, or anything in the universe, then let me know in the comments below. Also, make sure to check out our recent podcast clips over here about how VPNs being pre-installed on all routers may not be the best idea. But that's all from me. Take care.